everyone, it's Shannon here. I'm so excited to be with you all at Simon Says Stamp, sharing with you how to create this no-line watercolor card using a brand new stamp set from Waffle Flower's July release. These are the Waffle Flower products I'll be using today. This is the brand new Bouquet Builder 2 combo set. It comes with the Bouquet Builder 2 stamp set and the Bouquet Builder 2 matching die in the back. I'll also be using the Sunshine Panel die to create my background. This is a beautiful die that came out in Waffle Flower's May release. I'm starting off with some scrap Bristol paper. This is made by Canson. I'm going to stick it in my Misty here and then I'm going to pull off a flower from the Bouquet Builder 2 stamp set and just mount it in the corner of my Misty. I'll be using a Distress ink to stamp this flower. Because I'm doing no line coloring, it's a light shade. The color is Antique Linen. I just inked up the stamp and then stamped it. And then I will rotate my paper around and then stamp the flower a second time so I have two flowers. I'll give it a good press and that will complete my stamping. Now I'm ready to move on to coloring. I have Tombow dual brush pens here. That's what I'm going to use to do my watercoloring today. I'm going to use these colors for one flower. I also have a plastic palette here just to scribble every once in a while one of the markers down and pick up the ink from the palette. I also have some water and two brushes. I show two here but I actually only use the one round brush for today's painting. I'm starting with 743 and I'm going to start, I kind of break the, the petals up into light and dark so the front of the petals are all going to be light and then anything that would be kind of the under part of the petal that's going to be darker. I'm going to start with the light petals and I'm using this pink here and just going around the outer edge of the petal with the pink and then I will take a brush, dip it in water and then start to blend out the ink. It's hard to tell on camera how much water I'm using but I use very little water and I often will dip my brush in the water and then just tap it on the towel which you see right on the right there just to remove any excess water. You really need a, a small amount of water to get that ink moving and flowing. Now that I have the petal all painted, I'm going to take this 933, scribble it on my plastic palette, and then with a wet brush pick up some of the ink. And then I'm going to concentrate this ink right at the very inner part of the petal so it has a nice gradation. It actually looks a little peachy and it just adds a little bit more interest to these petals. I did scribble a little bit more of that pink down onto my plastic palette and picked up that and filled in a little bit more of that first petal with a little bit of pink, just a tiny amount on the edges. Now I'm going to continue this process for the remaining petals or the remaining light petals. I'm taking my pink and going around the outside edge of the petal and then I'll take a damp brush and blend out that pink color. I'll do that to all the petals and once I finish blending out the pink I'll move on to that orange color and take a little bit of it and put it at the center part of the petal to really give this flower a pretty pink or I'm sorry pretty peach kind of center. And these are just the light petals. I will show you the areas that I will do darker next, but I just, and any part that I deemed the light would be kind of hitting are my light petals, and then the darker portions would be any part of the petal that I think would be in shadow. So those parts that you see white right now are going to be painted later with some darker colors um, because they are the darker parts of my petal. So now I'm just finishing up with the orange and now I'm moving on to those darker petals. I'm using two colors for this these darker petals. I'm starting with the purple which is 665 and starting at the very edges of the petal and coloring it in direct to paper with the marker this purple and then I will move on to some red. The red here is when it's watered down it's pretty similar to the pink. It is 755. It's just a little bit darker and I'm coloring it right next to, right adjacent to the that part that I colored in purple. And then again I'll take a damp brush and blend out these colors to really get a nice smooth gradation and I'll also kind of blend the transition between the purple and the red. 
So I must admit, as soon as I finished coloring in this darker portion on this petal, I wasn't really sure that this was the direction I wanted to go in for my flowers. I just kind of felt like it was way too dark and I had too much contrast and it definitely wasn't true to life. So I wasn't really sure and I really did think about kind of throwing this whole thing away, but I decided that I should go ahead and paint some more of the darker areas in and just see what it looks like with more of it colored in. And I'm so glad that I made that choice because I really did start to like the way the flower looked after I started painting in some more of the darker areas. So I guess the moral is sometimes if you feel like you're going in the wrong direction and you and you might consider just scrapping the whole thing, it might be better just to continue going in that direction, continue painting the way you are painting because you never know, you can't always tell exactly how it's going to look when it's all done until you do it. <laughs> And I'm sure you noticed by now that I'm basically painting the dark areas of the petals exactly how I painted that first one. I do vary it up once in a while where I'll start with the red at the very edges of the petal and then go over that red with some of the purple. That just kind of mixes that red and purple together more and I have a little bit more of a, a maroon color instead of this purple and red. And again, it just creates a little bit more variation on the flower and makes it a little bit more interesting. So now I'm moving to the center of the flower. For the center, I will paint the bottom half like I did for the darker portions of my petals. And then for the top half of the center, I'll just paint it like I did for my lighter portion. So I use the pink and the orange, and then for the bottom half, I use the red and the purple. And with that center done, my flower is finished. Now I'll move on to the leaves and stem. I have three greens picked out. I'm starting with my lightest color, which is 133, and I'm coloring most of the leaf and the stem with this 133. Then I'll move on to a medium shade of green, which is 245, and I'm going to color the edges of the leaves with this darker green base and, and any part of the leaf that would be in shadow. So those leaves that are kind of tucked up under the, the flower are going to be darker as well. And then the side of the stem. And then I'll move to my darkest green. I'm going to use just a little bit of this. This is 346. It's actually actually kind of a teal color. Um, I just like to throw this in here, there just again for a little bit more variation. It makes the leaves and stem more interesting to look at. So I'm taking now my damp brush and I'm starting at the dark portion of the leaves and blending out towards the light green. And what I'm doing is just kind of mixing the colors and crea creating a gradation, a softer gradation. So you have this nice kind of roundness to that leaf. I'm going to blend out all the other leaves in the same man manner, starting at the darker portion, blending towards the lighter green. I will often have to stop and clean my brush because I'll be dragging too much of that darker color over to the lighter areas. And if I do that, this will all start to look like one flat color. So you definitely want to clean your brush out every once in a while if you're dragging too much of your darker ink around because you do want to create that um, gradation or that that uh, variation on the surface just again to make it more interesting i'm not trying here to really make this flower look real to life i just i'm going for contrast and some um, value and that will complete the leaves and stem now i'm ready to move on to my second flower I'm going to color my second flower differently than I did my first. I'm going to use yellows and oranges for this flower. I'm starting out with yellows for the lighter areas of my petals. I'm starting with 993, which is actually a kind of a darker yellow, and I'm coloring around the exterior edge of the petal and then I will color a bit of the center in with a very light yellow which is 055 and then I will take a, a damp brush and kind of blend the two together blending that outer edge to kind of create a softer gradation and blending the lighter yellow up towards that the outer edges. I'm going to continue this process for the rest of the lighter areas of the petals. So I'm again starting with my darker color at the exterior edge of the petal, moving to the, the brighter yellow for the interior section of the petal, and then kind of blending the two together with a damp brush. This time I'm working petal by petal uh, and, my, and working my way around the flower. I'm just going to jump ahead here to where I'm adding the final touches to the 
light parts of the petals and now I'll move on to the darker petals. I'm going to use three different markers for the darker portions of the petals and mainly sticking with oranges. I'm starting with my darkest orn orange which is 925 and I'm coloring again the very edges of the petal with this dark orange. Once I finish coloring those I'll move to a lighter orange which is 933 and I'll just color right adjacently to the darker orange portions and then I'll finish up with my bright yellow 055 just in the center. Again I'll now grab a damp brush and blend out those three colors. I'm starting at the darker portion blending towards the center and whenever I have too much of that dark color that orange color on my brush I'll go and clean my brush and then start with a nice clean but damp brush again and start blending out again. This just ensures that that center portion is still lighter than the, the edges of the petal because I do want to create that uh, look of roundness. I'm going to repeat this process for all the remaining darker portions of the petal. So starting with that dark orange at the very edges, moving to my medium orange, and then putting that bright yellow in the center and then blending them out. I'm going to jump ahead here to the end when I'm just finishing up the last petal. So now I'm blending out that last dark portion of the petal and I'm now working on the center. I'm doing the center the same way I did the last um, flower. So the bottom half is in the same colors that I painted the darker portions of the flowers and the top half is the lighter colors that I use for the lighter portions of the flowers. Now I'm just fine tuning with a little bit more blending, kind of softening a little bit, but that flower is done. I went ahead and colored the leaf and stems on the yellow orange flower off camera because you saw me do it exactly the same way I did the pink flower and then I also die cut the flowers out with the matching dies. I'm now going to create the background for my card. I have the sunshine panel die here and an A2 panel of white cardstock. I just centered the die on the cardstock, used some micro pore tape to hold it in place, and then ran it through my die cutting machine. You can see how beautiful this die cuts through the cardstock. Everything just pops out so neat and clean. Now I'm ready to stamp my sentiment. So I have the Bouquet Builder 2 stamp set again, and I'm pulling off Hello Beautiful, mounting it here on my Misty. I'm going to stamp this on black cardstock, but I'm going to do some heat embossing so I put down some anti-static powder. I'm going to ink up my sentiment in Versamark ink, make sure my stamp is nice and clean that there's no little hairs on it, ink it up, stamp it, and then I will grab some white embossing powder and just dip my sentiment into the powder and get it completely covered and then I'll heat set it with my heat gun. With my sentiment done, I'm now ready to put together my card. I have foam tape added to the back of my trim down sentiment and I also added foam tape to the back of the flowers. I have my sunshine panel die as well as an A2 top folding card base. I'm going to use some liquid adhesive to glue down this sunshine panel die cut to the front of my card base. I'm just applying glue to the frame and to the very center of the panel and then I will just stick it down here and hold it just for a second for that glue to set. With my background panel all in place, I'm now ready to move on to my flowers. I am going to arrange these flowers on the left side of my card. I am just removing the foam tape on the back of the flowers and then sticking them down. I stuck the pink one down first and now I'm going to stick this yellow orange one down. I did have to kind of adjust the position of the foam tape there to make way for those leaves on the um, pink flower with foam tape. They kind of got in the way. And now that my flowers are stuck, I'm going to finish up with my sentiment. Again, this has foam tape on the back of it as well. So I'm just removing the backing on my sentiment and then sticking my strips down. I'm going to finish up with some beautiful sequins from Lucy's Cards. This is the ice crystal sequin shaker. I've got them all positioned and I'm now picking up with a Marvy jewel picker tool using some tonic Nouveau crystal drops in morning dew color to just adhere them down. I'll just stick down this last sequence, just kind of adjusting it here with my scissors, and that completes our card. I really like how these flowers turned out. The, the card's relatively pretty simple. We're letting those flowers that we spent a lot of time coloring on be the focal point. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you want any more information on the products I use, please visit Simon Says, and thank you for watching.